The Biden administration prepares to crack down on domestic terrorism. All right, guys, we're going to try to do some real thinking out loud today. There's been a lot of things going on in the news and on social media, and I'm going to try to get, you know, red cotton strings, conspiracy theory, chain smoking cigarettes in my fucking basement in a dark room with this. I'm going to try to string everything together here. I'm going to try to think out loud to give you some perspective on what I think is going on. Okay, so recently in the last week or two, the Biden administration had a press release, a, a press conference, okay, where they had somebody come on, a press consultant, and talk about the Biden administration's plan to tackle domestic terrorism, to tackle uh, domestic extremist political thought, all right? And so there was a lot of discussion, obviously, about the events of January 6th, where QAnon supporters, white supremacists, Proud Boys, you know, various groups and, and uh, conservatives and right-wingers who were contesting the Biden-Trump election, you know, there's a lot of talk about that, uh, with a focus on how increasingly Americans are being radicalized are turning to extremist belief systems and political ideologies. And this is happening, as I said, through a process of online radicalization. And during that press release and in various articles that came afterwards, the Biden administration uh, released this graphic here that I kind of want to give a rundown of to you guys. All right, so what we have here is domestic violent extremisms. And this graph right here kind of gives a lowdown of political ideologies that may breed uh, extremism or may breed uh, domestic violent extremism or terrorism. So the first thing we have here is racially or ethnically motivated violent extremists. DVEs with ideological agendas derived from bias often related to race or ethnicity held by the actor against others including a given population group. You guys have to forgive me here. I'm going to run down these here because I want you guys to hear them. Animal rights slash environmental violent extremists. DVEs seeking to end or mitigate perceived cruelty, harm, or exploitation of animals or perceived exploitation or destruction of natural resources and environment. Anti-government, and this one's a kicker, or anti-authority violent extremists. DVEs with ideological agendas derived from anti-government or anti-authority sentiment, including opposition to perceived economic, social, or racial hierarchies, or perceived government overreach, negligence, or illegitimacy. Militia violent extremists. DVEs who take overt steps to violently resist or facilitate the overthrow of the U.S. government in support of their belief that the U.S. government is purposely exceeding its constitutional authority and is trying to establish a totalitarian regime, oppose many federal and state laws and regulations, particularly those related to firearms ownership. Now here's the one that really got me. It's highlighted for a reason. DVEs who oppose all forms of capitalism, corporate globalization, and governing institutions which are perceived as harmful to society. So, that's what we have here in this, in this diagram that the press release talked about. Now, looking at this, racially or ethnically motivated violent extremists, animal rights slash environmental violent extremists, anarchist or anti-capitalist violent extremists. Okay, so obviously the Biden administration is talking about, said it a hundred times now, violent extremism. Okay, that's what they're talking about. People that would be willing to uh, commit acts of, of domestic terrorism, i.e. bombings, the events of 1-6, all of that, right? But what I want to point out here is everything in this diagram is anti-status quo, anti-capitalist, um, anti-government overreach, anti-environmental dis uh, destruction, anti-globalization. Everything that the United States government and its corporate oligarchy stands for and perpetuates around the world. Okay, And yes, they're painting it as violent extremism. So we're only, and if you watch the press conference, they're painting it as violent extremists, right? 
we're only going to, in the press release they talk about we're only going to you know people that are potentially violent. We're going they talk about we're going to do it within our constitutional authority. Okay. But that's a fucking slippery slope because it starts with uh, potentially violent people. Okay, but they put these power structures in place. They gear the surveillance state and, and surveillance apparatus towards, you know, looking for violent extremists, right? But very quickly, it can go, it can go downhill. It can spiral out of control where it's anyone that holds any belief that is anti-status quo. They'll make some justification for it. Like, well, these are the ideologies which are causing people to turn violent. We have to stop these ideologies in their tracks before it can radicalize people to the point of creating violence. And in the press conference, they actually talked about that. They talk about stopping it before it happens. Pinpointing the people that may have a tendency towards violence because of the things that they believe in. Also during that press release, they talked about setting up a hotline where American citizens can make a, a phone call to presumably the Department of Homeland Security if they feel that their friends, neighbors, co-workers, or family members have been radicalized or may have extremist ideology or beliefs. It's a snitch hotline. Literally. It's, it's like the definition of a win witch hunt. You know, you hear somebody at work talking about, we need to unionize, and they say things about, like, capitalism... It does this it's, we're being exploited right and the co-worker that's a fucking bootlicker here's that and here's all the propaganda they put against socialists against uh collective ownership you know they have all this stuff embedded in their brain and they hear that and they're like oh my god and you know they, they make a phone call to dhs and suddenly you're on a watch list if you're anti-capitalist you can be on a watch list if you're against the destruction of the environment you know of these greedy corporations causing climate change, you can be put on a watch list because of the things you say, because somebody turns you in. It's literally McCarthyism 2.0 in the digital age. And it's fucking scary. So going along with this, I was on Facebook, and I came across this. This right here. I typed, I saw this, that the hashtag revolution was being blocked by Facebook. Okay. I typed it in. You can go right now and check it for yourself. The hashtag revolution is blocked. And from what I saw when I went and looked, it had 1.5 million hashtags about hashtag revolution within the last hour. This is that censorship that we've talked about on other episodes of the show. They're stopping in its tracks. They're not even letting you use the hashtag revolution, peaceful revolution or otherwise. Social media has blocked it. Going along with that, I have something else for you here. This was shared to me by some various comrades and, and colleagues on Facebook as well. This one right here says, Are you concerned that someone you know is becoming an extremist? We care about preventing extremism on Facebook. Others in your situation have received confidential support. Yep. And coming along with that, I have this one here. That, you know, hey Dave, looks like you've been exposed to potential extremist ideologies. We just wanted to let you know that this is an extremist ideology and you should think twice about it. And it says, what does it say here? Extremists try to play on your anger and disappointment to try and radicalize you. That's where we're at now. And in that same press release that I was talking about, they talked about getting social media involved in helping to deter the rise of extremist ideologies in the United States. But that's the thing. What counts as extremist ideologies? Is it just violence? Like I was saying. Where do we draw the line with that? I'm a socialist. I'm a communist. I don't believe in the private property system that we have now. I believe workers should own the businesses that they work in. They should collectively, democratically elect their board of executives to decide how the business should be ran. I don't believe that just because somebody's rich, they deserve to get richer. I believe certain industries should be nationalized. 
I, I'm an extremist. It's the definition of an extremist. And how long is it going to be before one of my coworkers, because I'm talking an awful lot about things I ought not to be, makes a call to the DHS and says, hey, this guy that I work with, man, he's talking about we should own the target, that we don't need the bosses. And bam, if I ain't already on an FBI watch list, I am fucking now, just like that. And what do they do with that information? Does that give them the warrant using the, the Patriot Act powers to tap my phone lines? To go through my browsing history? We already know they're all doing that. But now they can justify it. Oh, well, we did all this and took away his constitutional rights because he was talking about communism, because he's talking about socialism, because he's talking about worker co-ops. Just like that. That's all it takes. But I got even more for you here. And I'm sorry, this video is probably going to go a little long. I apologize for that, but there's a lot to talk about, and I hope I'm getting through it and making these connections for you guys. This one right here is a leaked document regarding military training uh, exercises, uh, military training information. Okay. I'm going to zoom in on it here and read, and read the main thing. It says, under C, study assignment number three, anarchists, socialists, and neo-Nazis represent which terrorist ideological category? So, a little bit of a runaround there, but they are blatantly calling anarchists and socialists terrorists in military training information documents. I mean, violent or otherwise. doesn't say anything about being violent. And it doesn't have to. The fact that it appears in the document at all shows you what the military-industrial complex, the DHS, NSA, surveillance state, the status quo thinks about socialists, potential terrorists. People that are against the status quo can be a danger to the status quo. And now going along with this, I, I some some months back, and, and I looked all over for it again. I tried to find it. I, I couldn't find it because I wanted to share it with you guys. But I stumbled across an article that talked, I can't remember, I think it was from BBC. May have been from Al Jazeera as well. Um, but it talked about how the United States military, partic particularly National Guard branch, was conducting military exercises in the United States uh, geared towards domestic guerrilla warfare. And, I mean, you can, you can call bull bullshit on that. You cannot believe me. But I'm, I'm telling you, for whatever my word's uh, worth, I read this myself some months ago. I tried to find it for you guys. I couldn't dig it up. But they were uh, conducting strategies and military techniques about how to wage a war on domestic soil against their own citizens if there was an uprising, if there was a revolution. How would we put it down? What sort of exercise would be needed? How would we uh, conduct a protracted long war against potentially terrorists uh, of our own descent, of our own nationality? That, that's happening. It has happened. You know the higher-ups in the military are talking regularly about this sort of thing. There was actually an interview with a high-ranking uh, general who was – the media – talked mostly about how he discussed critical race theory and defending it uh, being taught in the military. But he also talked about, I've read Marx, I've read Lenin, I've read Stalin. Okay? Some months, or I guess it was probably about a month ago now, also, Hillary Clinton was talking about the relationship between China and how a lot of our industry has gone over there, causing the deindustrialization here in our own country, and, and how... Um, you know, like protective equipment that was needed during the pandemic and medicine, things like that. Well, they're all manufactured overseas in China, and that puts us in a weak position, and blah, 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 et cetera. Yes, yes, all very true. But what struck me was the language she used. She said, we need to seize the means of production, so to speak, which is obviously classical Marxist language. Going along with that, I've seen several articles from Forbes from – the uh, New York Times, things like that. There was one that was celebrating uh, the life of Lenin. You know, his 100-year uh, centenary or, or, or his centenary uh, anniversary of when he passed or something like that, right? 
you know, so there was on this article on my timeline, uh, you know, a big image of Lennon coming from like Forbes. The other one that I saw was commemorating either Karl Marx's birthday or his death or some anniversary of his as well. And, and the quote with it was, he called our magazine a billionaire rag. Okay, so what am I getting at with this? You got this general uh, saying that he's read Karl Marx and, and all this stuff. You've got these two different magazines bringing up, you know, uh, Marxist leftist heroes, uh, revolutionary leaders. And then you got Hillary Clinton making this, you know, little toss in about seizing the means of production. What does this tell me? What does all this coming together tell me? The military documents, this press release, all of it. The, the guerrilla tactics preparing for potential civil war uprising. It tells me that the establishment, the, the media, the military industrial complex, the corporations, they know that more and more Americans are radicalized. And in particular, white supremacy and shit aside, they are rejecting the capitalist system that we live under. They are rejecting the oligarchy and the blatant corruption of this government. And they're scared. They know that people are reading Marx. They know that they're listening to leftist thinkers and dialogues, channels like this. And they know that we make a lot of sense and Americans are listening to it. And they know that that's just a hop, skip, and a jump from an organized working class that is hell-bent on taking them down, peaceful or otherwise. And the last thing I wanted to bring up to you, I'm sure you maybe have seen this on your own social media timelines, is, you know, we've had a year of anti-police protests. And what is Biden's response to that? I have this article here for you guys. It says, President Biden said on Wednesday that states could draw from $350 billion in federal stimulus money to shore up police departments and vow to crack down on gun dealers who fail to run background checks as the White House seeks to combat the alarming rise in homicide rates in America's cities. Right. So on top of all these other things I've said, is they're giving more or encouraging police to take more funds despite the anti-police protests. Not defunding. They try to make it sound like in this article, you can read it for yourself, that we we're going we're gonna to direct it towards crime prevention, but that's all bullshit. They always say shit like that. So on top of everything else, they're giving more spending to the police to increase the militarization. And I don't know if you guys realize this, but it should be fucking obvious. The war on drugs was an excuse to militarize our police into being an occupying force for just this occasion, for a population that is so upset and so enraged and is no longer willing to take the yoke of neoliberal oppression anymore that they very well may rise up. And you got a highly trained, militarized combat force in every single major urban center in America as the shield that waits for the spear to come out with the national guard the actual military so yeah guys this is what i have for you i know it's kind of a lot uh this video went a lot longer than i really wanted it to but you know there was a lot to cover and i wanted to make sure i get got to all of it and like i said i know this sounds conspiratorial like i said like me got a fucking some red yarn going nuts chain smoking in my basement oh fuck the government the government it's coming to get us fuck it's finally happening and I know it sounds like that, but, you know, I'm thinking out loud. And when I see all these things all happening within the matter of a week or two, I start to get real, real uh, suspect. And this is it, guys. You know, we're in the new Red Scare. And if you want me to get real conspiratorial, I'm sure this is a thought maybe some of you have already had. But it was real fishy how easy it was to get into the capital wasn't it hardly any police and no barricades none of that despite all the talking online you know they knew about it they were even talking about it they just kind of walked in you couldn't have, you know lock the doors or set up barricades had some of those national guards sitting outside what i'm trying to say is conspiracy alert maybe they just let that happen you know purposely move some police around made sure there wasn't anybody around nobody really tried to stop them 
So you could have all these loonies breaking the Capitol and make this huge event in American history and, you know, give the Biden administration and the various other government branches wide powers to combat extremism. But yeah, guys, that's all I have for you. Uh, as always, I'm thinking out loud. Um, I'd really like to get a discussion uh, going on this one down in the comments section. Let me know what you think. Am I being batshit crazy or am I not the only one seeing the writing on the wall here with this? I mean, conspiratorial or not, man, like I said, I think it's hard to not see the writing on the wall. Drop a comment. Let me know what you think about it. I think we're about to see a real ramp up on, on the crackdown of uh, violent extremism. I think we're about to see censorship taken to a whole new level. And all the work I've put in this channel, there's part of me that's afraid it might not be around much longer. Maybe, maybe even by uh, the end of the year. So, But as always, guys, I, I love you very much. I'm sorry to get dark and gloomy on you again. But guys, we're living in dark and gloomy times. So again, like I said, drop a comment. Let me know what you think. And uh, as always, it's cool hanging out with you. Until next time, guys, I love you very much. And I'll speak with you again soon. Bye.